So what's your plan for the really? parachute? We'd love to come see that man. Seriously, let us know. I will absolutely fly out if that's possible. It's going to be a historic moment. Am I? No, no. I'll just get kicked off and go back another day. <laughs> We're now comparing to race cars. The tech that's coming out is unbelievably better than what there was. Like, I want the Tesla forever plan. I'm done saying this is my last Tesla. It's not, I don't like, I don't think that's possible to do. Yeah, there's no good solution. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Tesla Geek Show. I am Anwar Beck. And I'm Eli, and on this week's episode of the Tesla Geek Show, we have several special guests with us here today. You know what? Let me go ahead and show them to you guys now. We've got Brooks from Drag Times and the great K10. Guys, welcome to the Tesla Geek Show. We are super excited to have you here. And real quick, before we jump into our whole conversation, I want to say a quick shout out to Evan X. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the Tesla Geek Show. It's the only reason we're able to do this because editing, as all of you guys know, is a huge job. They pay the cost so that we can produce these for you weekly. So thank you guys for that. All right, let's jump into this. Tesla earnings, baby plaid, plaid plus, like where do, and we're back. Where do we even want to start on all this? I think we start with plaid because we've got a couple of special guests. You guys remember K10? She's been on the hey. podcast before. Brooks, I think this is your first time, right? Yeah, first time here. We did that panel got, together. Uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Remember we did Miami. that panel together yeah, yeah, out in yeah, Miami? Yeah, but, that was that was a fun event. I don't know about you guys, but I had a few of those dactories and I was I was lit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good time. We went by yeah. motor one afterwards. Yeah, it was a pretty cool day. Oh, I remember that. We got to see those cars that we're not allowed to share the photos of or tell anybody that we saw. Now, I know for Super you, those Ferrari cars are probably ones. more significant than they were to us. They're okay. Ferraris, okay. you know. But they were special cars, for sure. Yeah. All right. For those of you guys that uh, don't know Brooks, he's got an awesome YouTube channel, Drag Times. He is our, like, Tesla community's token, you know, the speed demon. He's interested in, you know, all things that go fast on land and on water, uh, but uh, he, <laughs> there you go, <laughs> one shot for Brooks, but uh, man, we're so glad you're on the podcast. Can you give us a little bit of perspective? I mean, you are in the community, the number one guy I always turn to, you know, you're, we're good friends. We all, I always text Brooks if there's something going on that is sort of 60 related, you know, it comes to speed. Right. What did you think about this announcement about Plaid, Plaid Plus, and just like this, steering wheel that seems like it's straight out of like the racing world give us a little bit of uh input on that dude yeah i mean i was i mean obviously i ordered plaid when they first announced it like the day it came out so you know I, they said end of year and then there were some hints around the internet oh we might be coming out with something a little sooner so when they did plaid plus they basically migrated everyone's plaid orders to plaid plus and then opened up a new car so i was basically at the gym when this came out and i'm like oh and I just basically ordered on my phone as I'm on the treadmill and I'll, I'll check this out later or whatever the hundred bucks, I'll figure it out. And I actually went home to do a video based on the specs, you know, a thousand horsepower, a little lighter. Um, I looked at what we ran in the plaid mode uh, not uh, on uh, the Raven and based on the horsepower estimates, I was trying to figure out like how fast it would be because Tesla didn't uplink the website yet. So as soon as I sit down and do that video, they released this, the complete spec, which was nine, two, at 155 miles an hour in the quarter mile, which is just, just insane. I mean, it's just like, I literally just set the record in this car right here for the quickest production car down the quarter mile a week ago. And this Tesla, if it runs those numbers, we'll beat it for probably a 25% of the price, which is just, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. I'm like, I can't. And then in March too, that was the big thing. It's like, Oh, I'm going to have it in what, six weeks, you know? So I actually got a call from Tesla this morning, the guy at my dealership or service center. He's like, oh, we got your order, Brooks, and uh, I delivered your last car, and let's get ready. So I'm like, you know, I already started the trading process on my Model 3, submitted all the documents, the registration, all that stuff. So I don't know. It might happen pretty quick. Are you getting both the Plaid and the Plaid Plus, what Eli's coined baby Plaid? Yeah, I think what for me, it's like it's super important. Even 9.2 at 155 is still faster than anything I have in the garage, right? So I don't know. I'm kind of feeling like because they came out with the middle of the line Plaid, maybe Plaid Plus is pushed a little farther back than we might hope for. So I'm just playing the game of, you know, get it now, have some fun, and then figure out what to do with the Plaid Plus later on. If it really does want eights, of course, yeah, I'm there. I'm going to definitely upgrade to that. And uh there's a big difference between nine two and eight nine, believe it or not. It doesn't seem like that big of a difference, but it's 
a lot harder to get there. I mean, I've spent days at the track running 9.05 to finally get that 8.9999, you know? Wow. Uh, Kristen, K10, what was your initial reaction to the refresh? The, I mean, majority of the changes, I think, were interior related. Right. It's funny because, I mean, people have been pushing for the Plaid and X refresh. I know last year Elon had kind of said, eh, but uh, the night before uh, Omar and Gally and me had gotten on just that clubhouse we just started. And we literally were talking about how, you know, the, uh, the and I'm talking about the interior, the interior had needed to be redone because people wanted it. Um, but the vertical screen itself, just for software and for the gaming, that they're the purpose they're going for, that needed to change horizontal just to be like a, a similar uh, UI overall and just uploading the information. But um, no, I was thrilled. I loved it. It makes me want to S. I mean, I've always found the S very sleek and attractive. Like, I mean, I want all the Teslas. <laughs> but I mean, the fact that they hashed up the way they did the plaid was interesting. I didn't see that coming. But I mean, they've got to, like they said, um, ramp up the production of the 4680 cells. And like, they are like, they're constrained just by getting them out fast enough. Like Elon said, it's not that they're outdoing competition. It's that they need more. So they're making their own and they're buying the competitions or just the other battery makers batteries. So I was thrilled about it all so much. There was so much given. Right. <laughs> Is the only difference between Plaid and Plaid Plus just the 4680 cells? Or do you think there's other things that are different? Brooks, what different. do you think from a racing standpoint? Is there they a said, massive difference? They said different brakes. And there was a couple other things on that list of the Plaid plus upgrade. It just is less than 1.99 to 60. I mean, at this point, you're limited by tires almost and traction services to even get that. So I'm not saying it'll be hard to get it, but you know, it's, it's gonna take some time and, and effort to get it. But the carbon brakes will lighten things up. I'm curious to see a lot of people are asking me, well, because a lot of my friends ordered Plaid Plus now. And we're like, well, is it a, gonna be a wider track in the back? Because you know, you saw the shots around the Nurburgring. ring of the big wings and the, the wider stance and some more aggressive arrow. So that's yet to be seen. Maybe Plaid Plus is more of a, a track car than, than this car. But as far as outlight speed, yeah, I mean, it's it's gotta have different batteries because it's getting an extra 100 mile range too, and it's going faster. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously there's some benefits there for sure. I got, you got to assume, and you, I know you mentioned tires, but you got to figure that the Plaid S will probably come with different tires. I mean, the Plaid Plus will come with different tires and baby Plaid, because from what I understand, to go over 200 miles an hour requires a different tire than to go 150 miles an hour. You can probably speak a little bit more of that, 200. right? They both go 200. Oh, they do? Even baby Plaid goes 200? Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. I don't even know what it's to like, say. Like, yeah. Like, I can, my Instagram and YouTube is lit up because I did a video last night they're like yeah it's not gonna run that i'm like you don't think that they have already have this worked out i mean they yeah they nailed it to the hundredth which means they've already done it you know they're like i mean it's done it's gonna happen they're like the physics he's got rocket scientists on speed dial like they can figure this stuff out right and this isn't, so like, true. This isn't like the roadster where they announced it and then they're going to ship it five years later and was like, all right, we'll see, we'll see. They're shipping this car next month. They they have it. If they, I mean, yeah. like Tesla's like, it, it's amazing to me the like stuff that people believe because I'm like, if a brand says that the car ships next month and you lied, the brand loss is so huge. You can't recover from those things. Like right. Tesla's delivered on every other one. Why wouldn't they deliver on this one too? In the car, like literally you're going to have the car in six weeks. Right. Yeah. And obviously the road is a different scenario. Um, they, they said it was end of 21, didn't they? And then yeah. now they put it back with Cybertruck and everything. Um, but obviously that's a, a completely new platform. You know, my personal opinion, what happened is they want to test out the Plaid drivetrain in a Model S. There's more room. There's more room for the batteries and the drivetrain and everything. It probably can't sandwich a 200 kilowatt hour battery in the small platform that the Roadster right now. That's just what I'm kind of thinking. And they want to get a bunch out there, test it out before they go crazy on a sports car with cold gas thrusters and all that other good stuff. Did you see Elon on Twitter just before our show? He actually was talking about the Roadster and he said they had to do more battery pack development and more drivetrain development. And it sounded right. like he was saying mid summer of 22. That's what I would, if I read that correctly. That sounds right. Uh, wow. So what size so battery does the plan? Is, is, is it a 200 Plaid kilowatt hour? Roadster? My expectation is yes. baby plaid. Supposed to be well, my expectation on baby plaid is I think we may be 105, 110. I don't know exactly, but Elon had said previously that the tri-motor variant will be less efficient. So my guess is to even get 390 miles and to get this added top power, they've had to add a bigger pack just to pull more amps. 
So my guess is baby plaid is 100, 110. But with when you go to the new cells, I think you're right. I think we could be seeing 150 all the way up to 200 kilowatts. I honestly, I, I don't know. So are the newer cells, even what they're putting in, there's more dense. Can they pack 150 in there? Because I'm thinking they got to have at least 150 and plaid plus is probably 200. So baby plaid is still... Well, from what, we, right. from what we know, baby plaid is still using the existing 1870 whatever form factor that we have currently. I don't think there is a step change in cell chemistry in those. I think they're just putting a look like, you know, it might be 5% better as Tesla does each battery version. I think my car is like battery version D or E and they may be on right. something. Wow. Now. I think there may be a slight change there, but I don't think this has anything to do with the 4860s. Like this is just what they've been able to make do with what they have, which is insane. It's insane. It's a significant, it's 20% more power. That was, unless you're Brooks and you buy these cars every six months, like if you're a Tesla owner that's been waiting to buy best of the best, I would wait six months for the Plaid Plus, right? That's kind of why I was asking why you're buying both. Yeah, for me, it's all about timing and racing and having fun. So it's just like, and I kind of think Plaid might be pushed a little farther back. So for me, it's not worth the risk. I'll, I'll, I'll take the depreciation hit of... I don't know, it might be 20,000 over a year or, or something like that. And I think for me, it's worth it just to jump in and have some more fun because I've got the Tesla three now and I've been getting beat up in the races a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's time to, it's time to come <laughs> back on the Tesla front. You know, I'm having to borrow friends cars who have Tesla up. to run it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Do you have the performance? Is that what you have? The model three? Yeah, you I have the three performance and actually mine is not as fast as some of these other guys. And I can't figure out why, like I got, That's there's guys running 11, three, 11, four, and my best is like 11 55. And I'm like, take every step to get the best performance. And I just haven't been able to crack it. What year did you get? What, what year? Bye. So it's a 20, 2020. Huh? Okay. So yep. yours is fresh. Yeah. Not the latest, latest, you know, but whatever they just came out with a little bigger battery. It's, it's older than that. It's got like 19,000 so miles. What is the configuration you're getting for your plaid? What I know it's silly, but what is the color? I want to know. Red. <laughs> Red. Red. And what is the interior? Black? Black. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And I did the arachnid wheels. I have an extra set of arachnid wheels yeah. sitting up here. But I was thinking with plaid, they might have made them a little wider. And it is a different kind of finish on it. So I just I figure I'll buy the wheels now, maybe save money and just move those over to plaid plus whenever that comes out, if they're the same form factor. Yeah, but I love I the arachnids. Significant changes with plaid plus. There might be like a much lighter wheel, wider fenders, wings, and stuff to really go after that performance sector. But it's only $20,000 more, right? It's not a lot in the big picture. Yep. You get Plaid Plus. Yeah. I bet your baby Plaid resells really well. They just hold their value, and, and they're changing things so fast. So. I hope so with the new refresh, yeah. I mean, I didn't do well with my P100D. It was $152,000. That, huh. that was a painful trading because they came out with Raven – and all the faster ones and chop the price by 50,000. That doesn't help, right? Oh man. I think that was a one-off thing because like, I, I mean, if they chop the price by 50,000 again, it's now the same price as like a loaded three, right? So I think, yeah. I, think like, I think I think they've hit, they're closer to the bottom of percentage. Like, yeah, that was an insane price drop. And like, you know, I had known people who had paid fully loaded like 175,000 for the P100DS at its peak. Like that's what people forget. It was $175,000 yeah, car. Right, yep. Yeah, 175k. You couldn't pull it. I just priced this out online. If you get Plaid Plus with check every box, it doesn't exceed 160. It comes out to 158, 157, yep. 49. That's with uh, full self driving and everything. I literally checked every box. The most expensive Tesla you can get is doesn't break 160 right now. Plaid Plus, dude, that's insane. It seems like there's really no controversy. Everybody loves everything about the update. The steering wheel has been this like, there's a couple of different camps and I've been asking everyone I know, it kind of seems like the like the ladies don't really like, I mean, I don't want to be sexist, but like, like, I don't know, like all the guys are like, hell yeah, it's awesome. The ladies are like, oh, that doesn't make sense. Like, I, I don't see how I would use that. What do you guys think? Like, where do you guys fall, number one? I love it, I think it's amazing. I like it. I, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if it changes the steering ratio and tight things, so you're not overhanding. I mean, obviously, if you look at race cars, that's how that's how race car steering wheels are. Surprisingly, though, a lot of my friends are texting me, even guys are like, what are they doing? That's ridiculous. You can't put that in a normal car. So I don't know. It says yoke. I mean, is that is there an optional regular steering wheel? There's a rumor that you could get it, too. I don't know. It's a rumor so far, it sounds like. OK, I don't know. Is there? 
I mean, there was there was a 4014. Thought, Supposedly, they found it on the test website, and then this morning it's a 404 when people looked it up. So I, I don't know. I heard it was like something in the software. So I was thinking, I actually called my Tesla rep. I was like, listen, like I'm confused. Because I was, for a minute, my friend Pablo Gomez, uh, he was like, hey, I think the the only the plaid cars are going to get the crazy steering wheel like the racing one and the regular mm-hmm. ones long range will just get the like there'll be another variant that's like a regular steering wheel and that made sense to me yeah it does i just don't see like some mom in westlake in austin <laughs> driving this thing that looks like a freaking supercar no i, I well, messed with my friends i'm like well you know why the steering wheel is like that they're like why i'm like well that thing folds up and retracts into the dash when you're not driving yeah. and there's a steering wheel and they're like, like the movie they're like stop <laughs> no way now i get it and I'm, they're like oh that's amazing i'm like no nah, i'm just kidding they're like oh you're they're like oh you and then i also told them i go did you see drag mode there's you a new may drag not mode where it watches the christmas the tree dropping down the lights and it just launches automatically with the best reaction time. They're like, well, that's not fair. We're all giving up now. <laughs> but Tesla could do that, right? Think about dude, it. They're watching Brooks, traffic lights already. Brooks, Someone, the folding thing, you may not be that far off, dude. Yeah. There's a movie that it does that. Yeah. What like, movie I'm is looking that? at They're a driving through the tunnel. report, maybe. I think maybe that yes. movie is where the, the steering wheel dropped in, right? Maybe that yep. was it. On one of the early promo commercials for the Tycon, they were just giving a demonstration of this theoretical full self driving they'll never have. And theirs and their demo video, it shows the steering wheel, like, go back in type thing. And, like, it's a cool concept when that day comes. Like, I like yeah. that at that point. Like, I've never driven this type of steering wheel before, so I'm going to be interested to see what it's like. But I yeah. love if it's like, okay, when you're driving, you've got your fighter cockpit, and then when you're not, it just plugs away, and you just chill back. Ugh. Yeah. Which is going to be awesome. Yeah, and there's something – it does look like an airplane fighter, like, cockpit steering wheel, right? Is it not similar with the gear, how it goes up and down and the shape of it, like a yoke? It's – from a race car, basically. Race cars don't have tops yeah, on yeah. the wheels because your vision is interrupted by this thing, right? And you're so low yeah. in the car. So if you look at the pictures, your vision is straight over. There's nothing in front of you. You see the small center stack screen and then over into the road in front of you. Which um, goes on to people saying that they were confused by the Cybertruck. I mean, it, 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 you have the tri-motor in it and it can go really fast. I think as fast as the Roadster, right? Like, or at, almost like at some point, but, um, People were like, what if I towed something with it? Like, I, it's going to be, I don't know. I've never towed a fifth wheel, but people who do were wondering if it would be practical, so. Interesting, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you imagine parking where you have to turn and, and grab the top. That You're going to have to, it's going to be a different, or maybe they don't, they don't want you to park yourself. You just do something and just let it go do it for you, right? You know, know. True. You know what's funny? I have a, just a regular standard range Model 3, but all day today I'm driving and I'm envisioning if the wheel was like this. Like I'm trying to, like, I got, like I'm like actively thinking about where I put my hands. Yeah. Most part, I don't ever put them up here. I do have, I hold, was it 9 and 12 or 9 and 3, whatever they call that? 1 and 3. Like, but I that's do hold them like this. And I it's up higher, really yeah. Cool. 1 yeah. and 3? Yeah. I've seen Model 3s yeah. with the top chopped off. My friend Omar has... A Model 3 where the steering wheel is chopped off, and he actually has that in his car right now. Yeah. I don't know if they make those or he just did it, but I've seen it before in threes. It's probably aftermarket. Oh, I'm sure. It's, yeah, it's definitely aftermarket. I just don't know if he sawed it apart or, like, they're actually selling them where you just go buy them. It'd be funny. He just cuts them off himself. <laughs> you might be. Yeah. Add a carbon fiber cap, and then you're done. Do we know yeah. if the new steering wheel still has the, has the heat? Elon, Elon. This new design? Because that would be, I hope so. Because I love the heated steering wheel on the S. I know it doesn't get so cold out in Florida, but out here, we get we get winter a little bit. Right. It's definitely nice. That's definitely a nice feature. Does anybody know, K10, do you know by chance if they kept the heated steering wheel? Um, I think they did, because I think they had a picture showing it. Is there a cooled steering wheel, too? Doesn't the X have a cooled one? That's a thing. I, I didn't I see thought, that. Um, I, seats back. They brought that back, so it's cool seats. Yeah, there's that. I don't know. I thought there was. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a welcome change. Hey, Elon alluded to a uh, plaid day or something. What do you guys think? Why do we need an entire presentation about these updates? There's a plaid day. Can you drive the car? (laughs) I want to go. When is plaid day? Oh, no. Didn't he say something about that, Eli? He said it last year. He'll have another presentation about plaid? He said on the earnings call. No, no, call, no. On this made, one, he said. Yeah, yeah. On this earnings call, early somewhere early on, he said. Yeah, he did. Do another call in a couple of weeks to talk more specifically about plaid. Yeah. Yeah. He so he call. had it. He's. Yeah. yeah. He said a call, but but last year he did say there would be a plaid day separate from investors' day, and people have been asking about that too. So. 
Yeah, that'd be amazing. I feel like if it wasn't for the pandemic, they would just straight up have done a plaid day on its own to release this, right? Because that's Tesla's hype game. Their product releases are like their marketing 101. But sadly, because of the pandemic, I think test rides would have been a mess. I mean, that battery day was crazy, right? We were all in our own individual Teslas. And even if we were, even if somebody we were there with, like we were staying in the same hotel together, traveling together, we couldn't even be in the same car. You can only be in the same car with somebody that was the same household. Wow. Because, you know, Tesla doesn't want to get, like, they're trying to stay within the lines and they're a big target if they violate any of the guidelines and any of the requirements from the county. So they really, they're really tight on it. I can't imagine how hard it would be to try and do an event where you're taking people on rides. Like, even test drives right now, they're, you don't, like, you don't even have a guy in the car with you. That's not an option. Like, the salesmen, they're touch, they're, they're touch free salesman lists <laughs> test drives. They just unlock the car and you get in and go and you get in and go without even talking to somebody right now. It's crazy. Yeah. Another note is that, you know, the car as it stands and it comes out is not actually legal to even drive at a drag strip. It's mm. too fast. So if, wow. if, you, if, you, if you know about racing, if you go over 150 miles an hour and a quarter mile, you're required to have a parachute on the car. <laughs> so what's your plan for the really? parachute? That's the rule. You've obviously got to be working on it since you know that you're like, I mean, you're going to get no, one I, run and then get kicked off, right? You might. A lot of people, a lot of tracks might actually just get booted for not having a parachute. I mean, obviously the rules need to be updated, right? Because these rules were made a long time ago with muscle cars that are souped up to go really fast, but maybe didn't concentrate on the brakes as much. So to slow down a muscle car with regular brakes from 150, 160, that's a big chore. Um, but these days, braking systems can obviously handle it. But, you know, the rules are the rules, so it'll be interesting to see. So Most are you already you know, working on your design for a parachute pack? Like, what's the plan? Am I? No, no. I'll just get kicked off and go back another day. Got it. Get your one run. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what I figured. You do the one run. I mean, typically I rent the track anyways. It's a more private environment and they haven't asked for parachutes. I mean, this car just went 151 in the quarter mile and you know, I think that's close enough. So maybe under 160, we can get a, a pass, you know what I mean? But, but to throw this kind of level of Tesla running that fast in the quarter mile at anyone who could just basically there's three options, regular, plaid, and plaid plus. I mean, some people just check the top box no matter what, right? They don't even think yeah. about what that means. Uh, that's dangerous. Then, then, you, then you drop them in a car that's faster than any race car that you're typically going to see at the racetrack. I mean, it's people are going to be, you got to be careful. I mean, it's it could be really dangerous, actually, for, for people who aren't used to that kind of speed to, to do that. I want to highlight what Brooks just said. He didn't just say any car. He said any race car. <laughs> we're now comparing to race cars it's not like the, the car the comparison to every other car is so like the gap is so big that it's not even fair anymore it's now comparing to race cars yeah i mean i, I was just at a couple of track events where the the in a certain class of street cars that you can drive were highly modified mclarens and gtrs that you know the the winner was it was a 9-0 so you're right there with the tesla unbelievable yeah so where do you think it goes from here? I mean, do you think we're hitting with plaid, baby plaid and plaid plus? Do you think we're hitting the theoretical limits of what you can gain with the physics of Earth's gravity and traction? Or do you think there's much do you think there's much more to squeeze? I mean, hypercar makers are making faster ones, right? I mean, there's the Lotus with 2000 horsepower. There's the Remac with 2000 horsepower. Of course, these are multi-million dollar cars that are not going to be much faster than Tesla plaid for, you know, 100 and 140,000. So yeah, I mean, so I think you're reaching the limits of how fast you can come off the line. But as far as continuing to accelerate, no, nah, I mean, you can always use more power and go faster and get there quicker. You know, I think the 200 miles an hour that Tesla says- You know, one thing that's that, impressive. yeah, Brooks, one thing people aren't talking is the drag coefficient, not less like early coefficient of 0.28. And after the, the refresh we did about four or five years ago, and now with the current one, I think they were saying it's 0.208, right? They dropped it even like, more. It's been yeah. a massive, like these small tweaks. They dropped it even more. We can't tell, right? They did these subtle changes, but it's enough to where, like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're making some changes in a big way for the drag efficient. Yeah, they dropped a lot, and then other people are saying, "Well, I mean, to go 200, usually you need some downforce, right?" Like I can tell you on on the McLaren, if you're approaching 200 and that wing is not up in the back, the car doesn't like it it's not it's not a great experience and i had that fail on me one time at 190 where the wing didn't come up and as i let off the accelerator the car got really really sketchy so i don't know how tesla handles going 200 miles an hour with 
I mean, if you look at it, it looks like, I mean, it's like a jelly bean, right? There's no things all over the car. There's no canards. There's no vents. There's no big wing on the back. There's no side skirts, you know, so I don't know. I'm sure they ran it and they know. Hopefully it's really stable though. People are really going to go 200. That's so the Roadster has a, has a tail or what is that? The, the flap in the back that comes, it, it, re- it rescinds and goes back in, correct? Does right. the plaid now have it as well? Did they? No. no. Okay. Not, I thought someone well, showed not, a picture. Not this plaid, but plaid plus. I mean, who knows? They could make some changes in the year to add the, add Active Arrow onto it, you know. But a lot yeah. of these supercars, they'll drop down the front and raise the back, and suck the car down to the road, so that it's not so bumpy when you're going that fast. That's one thing when I noticed the Cyber Truck that when we were driving it. I mean, they they took it really fast right there on Hawthorne, but it did lift the front up a bit when they were when they yeah. punched it, which was interesting because it's so high up with the suspension. Yeah, I mean that's a really soft suspension so anytime you get it it's kind of kind of dip back maybe that thing will pop wheelies that'd be super cool yeah. <laughs> oh my God. i could tell you to run zero to 60 in two seconds to run zero to 60 in two seconds at the drag strip you could be close to lifting the front wheels it's got to come off that hard really on launch even for the plaid yeah that makes sense wow brooks yeah. can you can you please invite the tesla geeks whenever you pick your plaid mode up We'd love to fly down. Come down here. We'll we'll rent the track. To take part. And beat up on everything in my garage with the Tesla. It'll be so much fun. We'd love to come see that, man. (laughs) Seriously, let us know. I will absolutely fly out if that's possible. It's going to be a historic moment. Yeah, it'll probably be out in California. I'll be coming out to someone out there, though. We'll see. Well, I'm perfect. I'm here. I'll join you wherever you go. (laughs) Half car will travel. I'm there, 100%. Well, uh, I'll bring a Starman suit for you so we can uh, have uh, have star have you have you break the record. <laughs> That's Starman, perfect. It'll be a secret. It's not heavy. It'll be though. epic. It's not heavy. It's light. It's super, lightweight. It's super light. Good. 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 Let's chat a bit about the upgrades they did. In- I like what they did. That third screen in in the second row of the Model S. Uh, there's like a room. It almost like some of like the luxury car type vibes, right? like a Maybach, like you have wireless charging now in the back row and all that. What do you guys think about those updates? That was the one thing that the Model 3, it was so simplistic kind of minimalism. But um, I think you were already seeing luxury cars. I mean, Acuras were doing that a long time ago. That's just an Acura. <laughs> but I mean, with with the extra. So going back to that is probably the way they should go. People probably request it. So my opinion. <laughs> I love it. I love the game system in the back. I mean, I've got a five-year-old daughter. She's going to go crazy of having this screen in the back just for her. I mean, like her iPad that we bought her is literally just for that use case anyway. So to have it in the car and you're talking 10 teraflops of processing power, are you kidding? Like, yeah, I'm excited for the gaming future of it. I mean, I wish I was a kid when this came out because I would have had a completely different road tripping experience if my family had had one of these things. Um, yeah, and it's also another cool differentiation to say, hey, the X and S do have some things that the three and Y don't. And if you want to keep those cars as relevant, they needed to they need to add something extra. And I think this is a very nice extra um, that will help people in the decision making. Now they did raise the price uh, kind of substantially, so I think that's going to have an impact. But yeah, I think I think they did a pretty good thing. The fact we can play those games on it is crazy. But anyways, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's a whole host of new games coming. I mean, he was he was saying it's as powerful as the next generation consoles that just came out. So, I mean, maybe you just bring your Xbox controller, you connect it over Bluetooth, you got wireless gaming. Um, I don't Can you play the games in the front while you're in driver? No, you have to be parked. Uh, I think you can do karaoke. I don't know about the gaming. I haven't tried it. Okay. So at least in the back, then you'll be able to do that. Obviously. Sure, pretty sure you have to be parked. The back, probably no problem. Yeah. I was surprised they didn't get rid of the speedometer gauge thing. You know how like in the Model 3 and Y, there's just that one screen? I, I totally thought that was the design aesthetic they were going for because <laughs> it was like this path of full cell driving. I mean, so like whenever the wheel does fold in, you won't be able to tell if there's a driver or passenger because both sides will be equal. I thought that's what it was yeah. headed. Were you guys surprised to see that that was still there? Not really. I think from everyone I talked to, they like to have that thing in front of them. They like to have that extra screen whatever's on it you know if it's the mile an hour or navigation it'll be interesting to see with the 17 inch over here and this i don't know it's it's what size the one in the front is it's actually pretty wide that you could put a ton of data up there and you know if it's full self-driving visualization or you know all that kind of stuff so i feel I'm not surprised they did it 
kind of common. Um, I'm surprised they didn't just replace that with some really cool heads up display. That's what I was kind of expecting. That would be more kind of in line with Tesla yeah. and the futuristic kind of stuff that's going on, right? But yeah, for racing, do you need the screen it? for the speedometer right in front of you? I can't imagine you want to really like, but I, I mean, I've never professionally, professionally raced, so yeah. you don't you're need it. Looking, okay. You're just looking up here. Okay. Just, okay. Yeah. So it's all really a feel up. thing, really. Okay. I say for I now, mean, on the race cars, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. you have shift lights for shifting. Yeah. That all you kind of looking for is that that indicator to shift. Uh -huh. Um, but other than that, you don't need anything else. Okay. For the heads up screen, I'm totally with you on, I love its value for nav that I've got that more, it gives you that more zoomed in focus on what your turns are versus the other screen showing the full bigger picture. That's why I wanted to still have it for nav alone. And then for FSD visualization, it's awesome. Like I'd be cool to see if with the new S did they put FSD visualizations on both the heads up and the big one now, like I kind of have a feeling they might do that. Um, and I think too, mm -hmm. you know, Real full self driving, we're putting the wheels, the steering wheel away is going to be some time away, right? Even once Tesla actually gets to the point where they think it's good enough to submit to regulators, there's isn't going to be a time frame of validation from them. Like, let's assume that even Tesla did get to level five at the end of the year, which I really don't think is possible at all. I think level four is most realistic, but let's say they did get to level five. That's a year away, year away for regulators. And that's on an optimistic case. If you go on a more pessimistic, realistic or pessimistic case, maybe it's three or five years. And that's a lot of time for these people to be driving these cars, right? Anybody who buys that car today may very well sell it and move on to their next Tesla, or their next car or before FSD is even, even done. So I think it's great that they're still investing in a driver experience because driving isn't gone yet. Yeah. I was disappointed 100%. at uh, Elon's or Mark self-driving. This is the same question that uh, Gally and Dustin Raj had the, they du duked it out on their channel about whether Tesla should, uh, you should be able to transfer your FSD. Like if, if I could transfer it to my Cybertruck, I probably would get FSD on my curve, but I'm like, you know, I'll, I'll wait eight months or whatever until Cybertruck comes out. Um, I feel like there are a lot of people that are like me that are like holding out. Yeah, I mean, if you think about all the people who paid for full self-driving and never actually used it, whether they went to another Tesla or another brand afterwards, um, for me too, like I bought it on the three, I've never used it. Um, and now on the Plaid Normal, I didn't put it on because there's no benefit now because it's not there. And if it's $10,000 on my credit card, if I want to turn it on, fine. You know, or I, you know, if I knew I could carry it over to Plaid Plus, I 100% would have bought it. You know, I'm wondering why, why did buy it. I got it at eight thousand dollars, not ten. Sorry, go ahead. It would be nice. I mean, they said, "How about we just transfer it like owners right now?" But what if they did a thing, a system where they had a tier? Like, if you bought more Teslas, like you got like maybe a credit to getting a discount on it up to a cap. So, like maybe if you kept on buying different Teslas, you could do it five times. You could transfer at a discount, more discount the more you buy. But then you can only cap it at a certain level. Then you have to start all over. I mean, that would be a benefit to people and incentivize them to actually continue. But I think right. what you're saying, you're right. Like people are like ten grand, and I'm not. Oh crap, it's not fully there yet. So yeah, but I like think, you know, what? they said it was going to be out what a year and a half ago. What was the original full self? In 2018, was? Elon said he'd be doing a coast to coast drive. Right. So there's people who've been buying it for years and never got to experience it. Right. So if you're staying within the Tesla brand and you're investing in that, yeah, I mean, I feel like there should be some, there's some assistance there. So you're not, you know, I think on our audio call last night, someone had already spent 30 grand on it. That's me. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that's me. Uh, 30, that's two cars. But you have the beta now or no? I do. At least I have the beta yeah. now. That's, that's the one thing I did say. I now am getting what I want, hoped for always from the beginning was to get to test this first. Right. So now, so, at least, I'm, I definitely feel like I'm like... got to get drag times on the beta program. I'm not on the beta program. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually had some beta builds before, but they were not yeah. allowed to be posted about. This was the first right. time that it was like... This is the one where they can go, yeah. Hey, I get it before. Maybe they didn't want people doing videos, but now it's all over. Everyone's seeing it, right? Yeah, they clearly wanted to get some excitement it's about better. this feature out there. Um, yeah, yeah my sure. take on the whole trade-in thing is and I'm against the idea of just straight transferring, but I think... What Tesla at the very least needs to be able to do is if you're going to trade your Tesla back in, they need to give you a fair value on that FSD purchase. Unlike right now, they're pretty much not valuing it at all. And that to me is, is wrong. And I think that is very disincentivizing. Like if I bought a Tesla, let's see if I bought the baby plaid and I got FSD for 10K and I 
upgrade nine months later, like you're going to, to, to pad plaid plus I'd be stupid buying FSD because what I pay 10 grand for, they're going to value it a thousand dollars or $2,000 or nothing. That's crazy. Right. You lose eight grand. Like it's, let's say I had the car for eight months. They should be valuing it for me at 8,000, 9,000. Like it should be, I mean, you, ha- you calculate in some depreciation. Especially considering the fact that if you trade it into Tesla, all they do is uncheck it and it comes off. Right. So it's not like the next guy is getting it. They could just charge the next guy for it if he wants it, right? I mean, and, they are. and they're charging a full true. pop. So if you trade in a car to Tesla with full self driving, they take it off when they resell it. When you trade, no, they charge yep. the full. They, they they don't exactly take it off, but they sell it for the full price of it again. Okay, but you couldn't buy it without and have Correct. an option to put it. on. Yeah. So one of the things they've done with their used is they force you to buy FSD for their used cars. So, be, yeah, so it's like a huge arbitrage for them is like they sold you the software feature for a really good price. They don't give you any really any money back from it when they take the car back and then they resell it at, the, at, the, at a high premium again. If they're going to take care of existing owners, they really need to find the solution where they fair market value it. Because here's the other thing. Well, one of the things we talked about in the clubhouse last night is, you know, they talk about how the market is not pro- appropriately valuing FSD feature yet. Tesla's contributing to that devaluation because Tesla's not appropriately valuing it, right? But Tesla says it's going to go up in value. And in the right? future, it likely will. But I'm saying for today, Tesla won't pay you $6,000, $8,000 for your FSD feature. Then it's not worth $8,000 on the private sell market. You see what I'm saying? Like if Tesla, uh-huh. like Tesla, the price is determined by what the market's paying and Tesla is determined that on a used Tesla, FSD doesn't carry much value. But if Tesla actually valued FS, like if somebody if you're on, if you're trying to sell someone a car and they want the car, be like, yo, FSD is worth 8K and there's nothing to point to. If I go to Tesla, it's not worth 8K, it's worth 2K. But if Tesla actually had a price point that they'd appreciate it at that you can point to, and it's like, yeah, I'm not going to sell it to you. Tesla's going to give me 6,000 credit for that feature. So if you're not going to meet me there, then I'm not going to sell this to you. Tesla's not backing up its value by devaluing it on trade-in. That's my yeah. take. Yeah. Obviously selling in the private market. You can you can gain some of that for someone that's looking for it, right? But then you lose your tax tax credit and check. So sometimes it doesn't make sense. Yeah, you can gain a little bit, but I'm saying that it would be worth more in the private market if Tesla actually valued it fairly on the trade-in for their used market. That's really okay. what I'm saying. I'm saying yep. in the private market, it's allowed to go for less on the private market because Tesla won't pay you anything for it on their used trade-in. Yeah. I feel like they're pushing it into subscription model. I think that's what they're doing. They're like, it's like all this hype right now. It's just going to be wedged right into everyone just wanting to go with pres- subscription model in the future because they'll find it. I mean, right now, if it's 10 grand and it is expensive, if they're charging, let's say 150 a month, you're still saving money by buying 10 grand if you keep it for like 10 years, you know. For us Tesla owners who now have learned we are, we're upgrading every year or two if we're into this. Right. Because like it's like an iPhone. The tech that's coming out is unbelievably better than what there was. Like the Raven was such a huge jump from the previous P100D that a lot of people upgraded. And now with Plaid and baby Plaid, it's like, holy crap, this is a whole next gen. Um, And in a few years from now, there'll be another gen with new hardware. (laughs) (laughs) So it seems like a product that you want to incentivize your people to upgrade every couple of years. And if you can make that frictionless, and again, it's 10, it's 10 grand. There's a way they can do it that they will sell a hundred thousand dollar car and $150,000 car again and again and again, so long as they can figure out this one piece. I mean, also look at the percentage of the price for the option based on the car. It's like $40,000 model three, $10,000, $139,000 $139,000 plaid, $10,000. It's like, I don't know. It's a, it's a lot of money percentage wise for like a car like that. You know, it's like, I think it's fair it's, to change the price based on the price of the car, but it's like to get people to bite. You know what I mean? You made an excellent point at the $40,000 model three adding on FSD is like 25% of the sales price. <laughs> right like a 20 like and that's a lot if you're buying a forty thousand dollar car and it's fun. definitely less painful when you're spending 130 you're adding on 10k okay that's an eight percent price increase so yeah you're right the proportional difference right. and the proportional difference to who has money to buy cars at that price point is substantial yeah that's yeah. going to be interesting to see what that looks like on paper penciling it all out i bet they just continue to tier the subscription different options you can turn on and off and what you pay for monthly and that's the way the average joe just like the Model Y carrying fleet car will go, you know? 
And I know we talked about subscriptions a bit on Clubhouse, but think about that. Think about a person buying a $35,000, a $40,000 Model 3 or Model Y. They're not going to pay $200 a month for a subscription service for for Navigate on Autopilot, which is basically all that it is right now. It's going to have to be a price point that it doesn't feel painful. And that's going to be... Yeah. uh, Yeah, I think you're right, Kristen. I think subscription model is what Tesla is going to care about really going forward. Um, and it's some people I think who own it outright are going to be a little upset that they paid what they did. And I think Tesla's just going to take that hit because their business model is going to evolve. Yeah. There's no good solution. There isn't. Like, how do you make it back to us? Like they can't afford to just hand us back money. Like they can't just give us all a $5,000 refund. Like that's out of the option. Right. Um, there's just going to be a transition point that's going to piss some people off. And, you know, eventually when Tesla does get to full approval, self-driving, and we actually see the price way appreciate, that's when we'll feel like we got ours. Although as long as we still own the cars that we paid for it on. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I said when I bought my Raven, that would be the last one. And then I always see Plaid. I'm like, I, I'm done saying this is my last Tesla. It's not, I don't like, I don't think that's possible to do. Maybe Cybertruck will be the exception because my used truck case of the Cybertruck is uh, to go out into the nature, off in the mountains and camp in it. And you really beyond what it has, as long as it has camper mode in the back, which it sounds like from Battery Day Elon's going to do. As long as it's got that in the back, I've got 500 miles of range. I've got solar panels as an add-on. I'm going to bring my Starlink terminal. You can upgrade that car more, but it's not going to change my use a ton. But man, what Tesla is doing with the speed and performance and range and charging on these new cars, how do you stop upgrading? Just give me a subscription plan. I want the new Tesla every two years. I want the, I want the Tesla forever plan. Just like the, like iPhone, the iPhone forever. The iPhone upgrade thing. You just pay and they just give you a new one every year. All I right. would probably sign up for that on the Tesla forever plan. Sign me up too, dude, for sure. I think you're right. Oh. <laughs> Who all has Starlink? Do you have, did you, are you the beta Starlink, Eli? I have access, I, I've, I've got the right contacts to get this thing immediately. The, the where I'm at is not on the right longe latitude situation. They don't have the coverage yeah. they need for my area yet. It's supposed to be like, it was supposed to have been this week, but I think any week now I'll be able to get it. They were like, okay, you can't, you can't do any videos or show that you're doing Starlink. And I know some people upload like their their pings, how fast they're getting it. But then I've seen some pull on videos of people with their Starlink. So I'm like so confused. But anyways, I think there are customers who are now just straight up customers now. Like it's not. I think there are some non beta. I honestly don't know. But I mean, obviously, it's just happening anyway, right? And I don't think SpaceX is going to like pull back, like cancel a customer who's paying them yeah. to test. Like you know what I mean? Like it's. <laughs> They're gonna you're gonna remove a paying customer for your service because they're not getting it for free. These people are these people are paying, right? They bought the hardware, they're paying the subscription. Yeah, it's what five hundred dollars for the hardware and hundred dollars a month or something like that. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, that's an investment. I'm gonna yeah. make it because I hate my telco and they're garbage, and I pay eighty five dollars a month anyway. I'd like a bundle, like you were saying, Eli, on all things Elon, <laughs> Starlink, Tesla. <laughs> The tickets on the on the on the on the Starship when we start flying low Earth orbit. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, question for you guys: When do you think they will actually put chips into Teslas so that they use Starlink for their signal platform instead of having to pay one of the legacy providers? That's a good question. I'm sure they're planning for that. We yeah. kept poking him, but he kept saying, "Well, it's like the size of putting a, p- a medium pizza on the top of your car." So the receivers, I don't know. For now, right? These receivers. Yeah, for now. <laughs> It's like we got cell phones that can do it. Like I'm sure there's a way, right? Well, like, it's I mean, gotta be. The big satellite radio works. Work. You don't have a big dish on your, you know what I mean? So this is true. Yeah, and we're not talking the same throughputs as like we need to be able to have a hundred meg or hundred gig pipe or hundred meg pipe, right? Like on a car, there's a reasonable trade off of download speeds that you'll accept. And I don't need to upload a YouTube video in 4K from my car. I mean that'd be cool. I'm- <laughs> That'd be cool, but that's not my expectation. <laughs> I mean, Elon's not going to tell us right now they're capable of doing it or that's the plan because you can't give it all away. Like you got to hold your poker hand still, you know? Totally. That totally. Yep, yep, exactly. And if you, you can't announce it before it's ready or you'll have other people like the Osborne effect they always talk about, right? Tesla's constantly got to be vigilant of that because they're innovating so quickly. Yeah. The Any Starlink's- final takeaways from the earnings call or, or the updates guys that you guys are just excited about. It sounds like we're all pretty like excited about the refresh. I don't think I'm glad there isn't this massive, like, Oh God, this is ugly. There's a little bit of that, you know, when Cybertruck came out, even within the Tesla community, 
like people were split a, a little bit about the shock of it. I tweeted out, I kind of, the, the, my main theme or thesis about this, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I said the new Tesla Model S design looks like the future we didn't know we wanted. So I immediately kind of, that's what came to mind. It's kind of like these visionaries, like I thought about Steve Jobs and the iPhone, like if you would have asked the general public, what would you, what would be the perfect car? What would be the perfect phone? We wouldn't, it takes as jobs, it takes a Musk to be like, guys, this is the direction we're heading. And normal people like us at first is like, I mean, anybody, you're a little bit shocked at first. You're like, whoa, what happened? Half my steering wheel is missing. A steering wheel has been circular for what, a hundred years. And all of a sudden Musk is doing it. It's to me now it seems obvious. Like the the left and right, the why do we need two blinkers? Like I'm literally like driving in my car and I'm like, yeah, I don't really need this to tell my car to go reverse par- drive or park. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that's all it serves is this like, can the car kind of, I think they were saying the car will be able to predict those things. And if you want to overwrite, you could do it on the screen. And then turning left and right, you know, when it's, full self-driving and the car is doing it on its own anyways. And then you can have like the little left and right blinkers on your, on the wheel itself. All those now seem very obvious to me, but it Mm -hmm. took a visionary or bold people at Tesla to be like, Hey, listen, this is the direction. Like get, get on the, get on the bandwagon. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. I could tell you this from talking to like, I don't know, since yesterday, probably 10 different people, not all are about speed and they've all had Teslas throughout the years right they wanted more of an exterior refresh because they're just like that's the same car brooks and i'm like and i had to go look oh yeah the front bumper is a little different the back's a little i mean it's just very incremental and my porsche friends like wow they're just doing what porsche does they're going to make the 911 for 50 years and change one little bit and the porsche guys will know that it changed but no one else will but i think people like they want a fresh car they do. They, they want something new and all the, the interiors. You no, know, I think people, at least people that I talked to, were hoping for a little more evolution of the exterior kind of features of the car. But for me, I'm good with the speed. I'll take it. Kristen, what do you think? What's your final takeaway? I'm glad they refreshed the interior. A lot of people really wanted it, especially Model S owners who wanted to get something new. It It isn't, it isn't really a refresh on the exterior. I think you are right. I just don't know if just the demand and the way that they are in manufacturing where they are in a place right now, they can do that. But I do hope they do something more along the lines of that in the future, which I, I hope they will. But um, the steering stock is interesting. It definitely seems like uh, since we took the stocks off the steering wheel with that yoke there too, and just using the little buttons um, that they definitely are camping and definitely betting on everybody really going with FSD in the future, because I'm, I'm very kinesthetic. And personally, I like having control on doing what I'm doing. And like, I should hope the machine would understand in some certain spots where I actually want to do something where other people would not want to. I mean, I don't mind parallel parking. I like a challenge. I think it's fun. I'm weird like that. But some people, I don't I don't know if the machine would read the fact that I want to flip around right now. Like, <laughs> you know, like, but it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But I think that Tesla definitely is camping on the fact that FSD and their vehicles are hand in hand, like a hand in glove in the future from here on out, at least when the Plaid S Plus comes out. Yeah. So real quick, you didn't, we didn't really mention the X. The X, it's got a thousand horsepower too, <laughs> right? There's no Plaid the X. plus X, but there is a Plaid X. And, that, and they're saying that car runs 9.9 in the quarter mile, which is- An SUV very, carrying seven people with a thousand horsepower, thousand zero to 16, two five, like it's yeah. stupid, right? That's very- And it weighs a ton. <laughs> very significant. So yeah. I have a personal friend of mine that I race with all the time. He's not a big Tesla fan. When we saw the X, he's like, yeah, I, I give. I give in. I have to have it, you know? Yeah. He's just like, I, I have a bop it. He's like, April, we're racing. I'm like, yeah, bring it. Let's go. It's going to break tens. With the, with Nine. The you know how many times I tried to just to get into the tens and the other X? Like, it took a while. And now we're going to chop off, nines. To chop off a full second of that is just phenomenal. I mean, it's just, there's nothing's going to come close in the SUV world. All right. I think it's overall. It's a fun car to drive. I think it was a pretty good earnings. I think it was a pretty good uh, new product launch for Tesla. Mm-hmm. I know some of the aspects of earnings disappointed, right? They didn't hit the margin that people were hoping. 
And we don't have guidance yet for 2021. So I'm going to be very interested to see what they come out with official guidance. It sounds like 750,000 cars based upon their comment of 50% growth. Um, We're breaking a million. What are you talking about? I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. I I think, I think pretty clearly that's not going to happen. And I think they hedged because I think they are expecting some production challenges. I mean, think about all the new stuff Tesla is doing this year for the first time they're producing their own cells for the first time. They're producing an a structural battery pack using their own cells They're So they're making cars that they, in a way that they've never made before. And they're making the cyber truck. That's part of their delivery numbers. And the cyber truck is using car making processes. that have never been done to make cars. They're rolling like SpaceX steel. There's just so many engineering challenges they haven't faced before. I think Elon and Reinhorn and team are being very responsible and not over promising because they're being realistic that there's going to have problems that they can't even yet expect. Um, and I think if they did 50% growth this year, considering the cars that are being launched, that's huge because the pent up demand for Cybertruck is just waiting. There's nowhere else for it to go. There's no other solution for you out there aside from Cybertruck. So whether they get it scaled up in Q4, Q1, or even Q2 of 2022, it won't ultimately matter because there's a flood. But once they open the floodgates, it's just going to pour for ages. And even if 50% of the orders didn't go through, that's still a half a million plus cyber trucks to deliver. And that's not even including what's going to happen when people start seeing videos out in the wild, you know, when, or when, or when their neighbor's out there working on his farm and he's using the cyber truck and he's just like completely showing off how what he's doing is so much better. That word of mouth game is going to penetrate with cyber truck, a whole new market that whatever people were saying, once they see the guy out doing what they're doing and the experience of it, it's going to happen. He's going to be going home yeah. saying, hey, honey, we got to get our sales one of them cyber trucks. <laughs> and I don't say that disparagingly, but like that's the folk who the market, who the PR and hype about it hasn't really reached yet. But once one of them starts using it, once it starts getting to the country, to the rural areas, it's going to be hilarious. You're going to drive through rural towns and things are going to look exactly the way they did a few years ago, except for you see these gigantic stainless steel tanks out in front of every hardware store. It's going to be amazing. General contractors will love them, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, this was fun. Thank you both for, uh, I can't believe we had Mr. Drag Times himself. We got K10, Kristen. This was fun, guys. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. It's an exciting time for Tesla. Eli, any final remarks? No, just uh, K10. Can't wait to uh, get up and do that ski trip we talked about. Definitely got to yeah. make that happen in 2021. It's, it's snowing right now, like crazy yeah. in Tahoe, like crazy right now. Like it's inches of rain a day or falling. So we'll have to hit that up. Brooks, if you'd come out Definitely. for the plaid test, I'm there. Just let us know. And we'll fly Please to call Miami. us. Fly to Let's Miami. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Thank you so much for having me. We talked about it for a while. Awesome. This thank is going to be worth watching. But all right, guys, I want to say thank you so much for everybody who's watching, for being with us this week on the Tesla Geek Show. Thank you.